If over half of South Africa's young people aren't interested in voting, what does politics mean for over, uh, for over and under 35-year-olds? And why can't the Democratic Alliance talk about its own record in government instead of attacking other parties? The Politburo is now in session. I'm Nicolas Bauer, connecting the dots for you on this Easter Sunday. In the Politburo today, first... First up, almost 12 million eligible voters in South Africa are young people aged 18 to 29. It took just over 11 million votes for the ANC to win the 2014 general election, meaning the youth vote could seriously swing things when South Africa heads to the polls on May the 8th. But according to the IEC, just over 6 million young voters, that's over half of those eligible, have decided to not register and won't be making their mark in spite of all political parties claiming to have the interests of young people at heart. Let's start here listening to these political leaders who seem to have known this all along. Our country needs courageous young men and women who rise to the occasion and help to build our country in line with our vision of a non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous society. Uh, you often find that too many of our young people get end up in townships, they don't have work. And my hope is that we can build a South Africa upon which we can have an economy where we have a job in every home, that townships can become dormitories of people who are unemployed. Sitting at home will not give you a job, but removing the corrupt ANC government and bringing in an EFF government which will prioritize the youth and women will be a good thing because then we are guaranteed of jobs, particularly for the youth and the women. So why has our political system seemingly failed our young people? To have this discussion, we're joined by National Youth Development Agency Chairperson and ANC Youth League NEC member, Sviso Mswani, the DA Youth Leader, Luyula Mpiti, and the EFF's Naledi Chirwa. They're in studio to discuss why their parties have all failed to entice the majority of South Africa's youth to the polls. So let's start off with you, Mr. Mswani. Yeah. As the National Youth Development Agency chairperson, yeah. it's pretty obvious you'll be hoping that the ANC will be back in power after May the 8th. But what does it say about your party's performance that the majority of the eligible young people simply don't want to vote for anyone? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you're right by saying that uh, uh, after May 8th, I'm not uh, probably hoping that the ANC will come back. The ANC will come back. And Why I does think, it deserve uh, to come back if it's it, failed it, it, young people? No, no, it has never failed young people. In fact, uh, when you do your research, uh, you must do it from uh, two angles. Yes, indeed, uh, not a lot of young people uh, registered in their entirety. But when you look at all the elections that have actually taken place, over 70% of the people that actually vote is young people. In the recent time, we've been having by-elections, which the ANC has been winning all of them. Majority of the people who are voting is young people. In the last registration weekend that took place, you would remember that those between 18 and 19 have actually gone out in their numbers. Uh, over a million of them actually registered. And, I, and I'm saying there's one thing that also we need to understand here, is that uh, part of our democratic system, uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, simply means that uh, you actually have a right to vote and a right not to vote, uh, uh, if needs be. But I'm saying that majority of young people in this country continue to show their confidence in this. Mr. M20, the IAC has made it plain that they're worried that the young people in South Africa are not voting. Mr. Mpiti, I'll bring you in here. It should be pretty easy for the DA to try and entice young people to switch allegiances if they feel so disenfranchised. But you too, as the DA, have failed to get young people to go out and register and even more so vote for the DA. I think the issue that we are facing in this country is much larger than just uh, young people not going out to vote. When you have to look at the diagnosis of what's actually happening in our country, the fact that the majority of young people are unemployed, the fact that graduates cannot find jobs, the fact that we have young people dying at schools tells you that young people are not encouraged or do not have hope in the current government or to even be partakers of this government. So I think what we've done as the DA is to really take our offer to young people and to say to them that we want to introduce a national youth service plan where young people can be able to get skills 
and, and become employable so that they can find jobs. Yeah. And ultimately, the diagnosis, I think, in this country is that young people feel excluded from the economy. They're not part of the economy. And what we need to do and what we've been doing is engaging young people and saying that instead of wanting to be dependent on grant and determined with pensions, which is what the ANC has done, we are saying to young people, we will give you jobs. We will make sure that we have an economy that can allow for jobs. Mr. Uh, MPT, it could be argued that they're not uh, feeling failed by the government, but the, by the political system as a whole. Let me bring you in here, Ms. Chirwa. Now, the EFF mm -hmm. claims to be the voice of the youth. Arguably, it's the ANC Youth League in a red beret. Uh, the sleeping giant is what you claim it to be for young people. But over six million young people simply would prefer a day off than actually going and queuing and voting. Is that also not a failure on the EFF's part? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it is. I think we are diagnosing the problem that we're facing um, from a wrong perspective or using the wrong spectacle. Um, the youth of today is living in a digital age, right? And the current setup of how governance is structured does not cater for the youth vote as it is now. I was even saying that we have to move past wanting the youth to go to schools and to VDs and to actually going to the youth. Because when we do our door to door and talk to the youth, they tell us, oh yeah, when, when is it open? It's not that their complacency does not come from the fact that they're inactive politically. And how do we know this? In the past five years, the youth have been the most politically active collective in the country. You know, uh, in high schools, your youth have been organizing themselves, mobilizing and agitating against the system in universities you've seen the most outrage and the most protests of what that are politically inclined so it's not that the youth are politically uh, you know trying not to be involved it's just the system currently as it is is not catering for how the youth is structured in today's day and age so Ms. Chiro we'll get to why the EFF perhaps hasn't launched a enticing digital campaign to get the youth out there and vote uh, Ms. Mtswani let me bring me back in here can the ANC really claim to offer the youth something new this election? If after 25 years you have over half of the youth eligible vote, simply not interested in doing so? Well, uh, of course the African National Congress uh, continues to have the interest of young people at heart. Uh, indeed, we've been facing a lot of challenges uh, amongst young people. Unemployment being the biggest challenge uh, that face young people. You would know that in our manifesto now, uh, you know, we've introduced a system now where we're going to scrap experience uh, for entry-level requirements, which means over 400,000 graduates will actually have an opportunity to actually find work. Uh, in fact, uh, the challenges that uh, uh, even my sister is raising here in the universities, in the high schools, you would know that uh, over 1,2 million young people are actually registered uh, in universities in this country, majority of them through the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, which has been provided uh, by this government for free now. Uh, you'd know that there are TVET colleges all over the country. Uh, over 2 million young people are actually registered in those particular uh, TVET colleges. Mr. M20, are you willing as an ANC member that's young, as the NEC member of the ANC Youth League, to take responsibility for the challenges, for the failures of this government? There has been progress, but there has been massive failures on the part of the youth. I, I, I agree entirely with you. There has been a lot of progress uh, in the country, I'm saying. But I'm asking if you're going to take no, no, responsibility no, 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 for the let, No, no, let me respond. <laughs> There's been a lot of successes in government, but those successes have also been coupled with challenges. Now, what we say, the ANC is the first one to admit where challenges are, and we're saying this is a way that we're going to address those challenges. What we don't simply do is to sit in a street corner and just lament, indeed, the ANC takes responsibility, but the ANC has a plan to actually fix those. Your own polls are actually telling you that South Africans now, they've got a renewed confidence in the ANC, they've got a renewed confidence in President Sarah Ramaphosa to actually take them forward. My two friends here, their own polls in their own organization actually puts them at an opposition. Okay, well, let me bring in your uh, colleagues here. Mr. Mpiti, uh, that is a fair assertion. We're going to be talking about the DA's attack advert in which you start. Why is the DA not putting forward what they can do instead of what the ANC has failed to do? Well, I think the DA has been putting forward what we want to do specifically for young people. I've been traveling the country speaking to young people about our plan, a simple plan that can turn around our economy and make sure that young people are involved. But most so what's important is that before you find the solution, you need to diagnose the problem. And the problem is, as Fris was pointing out, he's unable to take accountability mm. for the failure that the ANC has when it comes to young people in this country. Young people are unemployed. There's a saying that's quite clear, facts don't care about your emotions. And he's been emotional now. The facts are young people are unemployed, young people cannot find jobs in this country, and even in this conversation, he's failing to take accountability. But the fact of the matter, if, we, if we're talking about facts here, even though in your eyes the ANC has failed the youth, the youth's not running to the DA to vote for it. 
Well, the youth are not homogenous. I think, you know, many people like to use universities as sort of the, the benchmark to find out where the youth support is. Young people are in rural areas, they're not employed, they're in corporate world. So those are the young people that are also part of this conversation. And I think what we need to also be understanding is that young people are activating already in civil society. They're not only activating within the political space. So there are young people who are engaged in our politics and wanting to be involved. All right, Ms. Chair, we're going to give you the last word because we're running out of time here. You're saying the EFF is the voice of the youth, and yeah. we're going to see the voice, uh, uh, you know, that voice of youth um, uh, being heard on, on May the 8th when they vote for the Red Berets. Mm. If you look at voting patterns, though, the majority of youth are not voting for the EFF, and if you're diagnosing the problem that the system doesn't cater to the youth of today, what's the EFF doing about that? What has stopped the Red Berets from launching, like you said, a digital uh, a campaign that speaks to uh, youths in their language? I think you're incorrect to say that uh, the youth is not voting for the EFF. Uh, the make of EFF members, the make of EFF supporters are the youth. Um, we've seen this in our marches, we've seen this on our rallies, we've seen this even in the leadership of the EFF. It's just made up of the youth. And another thing is that we have launched digitally. Like if you look closely, you'll see that the EFF has much more uh, propensity or prevalence on social media, digitally speaking, because we know where our youth is. And not just that, but we trickle down even to the ground. That's why I'm telling you that we are not diagnosing the problem uh, properly, because we speak to the youth. We do our daughter to those every day and we ask them why they are not registered to vote and it's because the system is not catering the youth vote as it is right now as a step like if EIEC can stop just sitting down in the corners under the trees in schools and all of that and actually go into the homes like how they do when they do a uh, you know stats and finding out how many people live in a place or mm -hmm. whatnot then you'd see that youth is there to actually vote and other things that this you can see that the ICE is taking like necessary steps in terms of you can change your details online mm -hmm. right because they can see that that's where most people live like the virtual society Society is no longer an imagined community. It's an actual community that exists with human beings. And another thing is that uh, it is true that the EFF is the voice of the youth. Well, we'll wait to see whether or not that is the case on May the 8th. Absolutely. We've got a final bite of the cherry for all of you. I'm going to keep you to one sentence. One sentence. Why should the youth vote for the ANC? The ANC has a good story to tell over the last 25 years. It has improved the lives of many black South Africans. We simply say, give us a chance to continue to grow South Africa forward. MPT? The DA sees young people, we hear young people, we understand that young people need opportunities right now to be able to go forward. And what we are saying, simply quite put, we want to introduce a skills program where young people can be able to grow their skills and find jobs in this, in this country, because jobs are the most important thing. Ms. Chira, as the rose amongst the thorns, so to speak, you have a I'm, final I'm word. Not, I'm not a rose. Uh, I'm not a decoration. I'm not an aesthetic. I'm a human being. Uh, please retract that. Thank you very much. Um, the EFF is offering young people land and jobs. Uh, we are offering special economic zones in different communities and rural areas that will cater for those who are even living in those areas so they don't have to commute to urban areas. And the EFF is offering free education, first and foremost. It's offering skills to the youth beyond just rhetoric, beyond just speaking and saying we have a good story to tell, beyond just saying uh, one job in every house, but when you look down in the, in the province that you're okay, living, Mr. there We're is no have such to call a thing. You on that one. We, are more than one sentence. we are saying land and that is the EFF. If you want land and jobs, then you must vote for the EFF. All right. Well, there we go. We'll see what happens on May the 8th when the youth does go to vote. Still less than half of those eligible will be making their mark. And what happens to those 6 million voters that are just not doing anything and are allowing the electoral system to pass them by? Up next, why is the DA still attacking the ANC instead of telling South Africa what their plans are for the country this election?